Looking forward to a great evening together. Have a graduation this evening, which is always a real blessing and a op uh, precious opportunity to worship and to praise God. Tom's got a great word to continue us on in Church 101 and let us know who we are and what we're going and where we're, where we're going and all those kinds of things. So why don't we go ahead and stand. Let's set an atmosphere of worship, praise, opportunity to, again, go to where God is. Let God permeate everything that we're doing. Father, we come tonight and we thank you for your goodness and your greatness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this opportunity that we have tonight to show and to do all that you call us to do. Lord, have your way in the midst of this service. Be with each heart and each life. God, move in us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
personally. Uh, we're going to sing the chorus again here, or whatever Kendra wants to do. But I want, I want you guys all to stop for just a, think about, for just a second and think about why is God good in your, your life? What has he done? Every single one of us, even if we're going through a hard time, life seems to be crumbling, every single one of us have a reason to celebrate the goodness of God. He saved your soul. Maybe he brought you out of the depths of despair. I have not been able to dance or do anything, it feels like, for almost six months. And it's killed me. And tonight I was standing there and I was singing the song. I'm like, yeah, this is a good song. And I was like, I can dance. I can dance to this song. I haven't been able to do anything like that for six months. And it's not just because I can, it's because he is good. And I want to declare that with my body. It's just, you know, not your thing, okay? But I do want you all to take just a second and really pinpoint something. What are you thanking him for tonight? What are you declaring the goodness of God for tonight? He is good, amen?
John Gross simplified version, that means there's nothing good in me to boast about. Only what Christ has done in me and for me. Tonight, we are here to do a little boasting about two young men that have let Christ work in their lives. Come on up here, guys. Go ahead and have a seat, church. This is, a, this is a very special moment for, for all. These evenings are just are wonderful. And I just, I want to say, just from my heart, um, Jacob, I haven't, I haven't got to know really, really well. We've had some interaction. We've, we've worked together a little bit. Um, but I want to get real personal just for a minute. Stephen and I, uh, Stephen and I have bumped heads through the program. Um, we, we always came out good on the end, but uh, young man, I'm proud of you. And, and that, for me, that what I'm saying is you've walked it out. You've, you've done what, what the Lord has asked you, not what John Graw or the program has asked you to do, but I want to say from, from my heart, I'm proud of you, and I'm proud to stand on this stage tonight. This is, like I said, this is a special moment. These two guys have known each other since they were little kids, and uh, it's, it's somewhere along the way they turned left. But they came back. They, the Lord brought them back, and they're standing here tonight, and that's a big deal. I'm proud of both of you. I'm proud to be a part of this. Gentlemen, I'm so proud of you guys. I remember when you both came, especially Jacob. First time I ever met the guy was about a week in the program. He comes to my office. like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. He's like, I don't know if I want to be here. I was like, well, we can help you if you like. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if that's what I was meaning. Well, it was interesting. Right then he left and he went back to the kitchen. And I just felt God was telling me to go. So I went. I was going to drink the water. And I sat next to him. I started to get to know him. And I was like, now you can't go because now we're friends. And in the midst of it, one of the first uh, experiences we had was me, Stephen, and Jacob. And a couple others went to Hannibal and played some golf. And the funny thing about it was when we left, we went to go out eat at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> and when we got there, Stephen's like, I forgot my wallet. It's back at the golf course, and it's 9 o'clock at night. So we go back there. The golf course is closed. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how does he forget this? So we go back to the Mexican restaurant. I realize I left my wedding ring. <laughs> and it, he got his wallet back. My wedding ring was lost. So, <laughs> But the two things I remember about you two, I mean, I'm going to take with this, is your guys' endurance. You know, both of them had significant injuries while they was in the program. About May or sometime last year in the spring, Stephen playing some soccer and he hurt his knee, blew it out. And I took him to the Hannibal Hospital. And he's just, the whole time he's just like, man, I've had this happen before. I know it's an MCL, an ACL. I'm going to have to have surgery. And I know I probably have to leave. And he's like, I just, I'm not ready to go. So we just prayed about it. And about a week later, he had an MRI and they said, you know, it was like PCL or something. He's like, you don't have to have surgery. So he got to stay. And then throughout it all, you know, Jacob, you know, he's worked a lot of hours and put a lot of time in and just helped us ministry, sharp holdings out. And I know he had some struggles along the way in the sense of like didn't know if he wanted to be here or go. He was torn. And about the year mark, he made up his mind. And it was interesting is right at that same time we had a staff meeting where we said, you know, if you're here for a year, 
and the staff votes for it, you can go to the Bible college full time. So Jacob and Fred Winger were the first uh, people that took advantage of that. And as far as I know, he's doing great. So to me, this is more than just a graduation. These are my friends. And I'm just glad to see that you've walked this out. So this certificate of graduation is to certify that Stephen Parisich, Jacob Lackage, has su successfully completed the Heartlands Men's Recovery Program, a course of spiritual and personal restoration administered by Heartland Community Church, and is hereby recognized for such achievement. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Congratulations, my friends. <laughs> I don't know if y'all uh, noticed me getting a little emotional up here, but it didn't start up here, actually, when Jenny came up and started saying what she had um, and what we had to be grateful for and why we would dance for our Lord and why we would be, be able to praise his name from what he saved us from. Um, I started thinking. I remember being in the hospital room completely given up, completely just shattered, completely destroyed, and I, just, I was done with life. And going from there to what I know now, it breaks my heart that there's still people out there that don't know that, that don't know that there's something else. Everything that I had thought was good left in life, I had thrown away. And um, I didn't think I'd ever get it back because I just tried so hard. Every time I'd go into a program, I would go in and I'd do the best I could, and then I would try so hard to just keep doing it, and I would fall, and I would just go further and further down. And then I went to the home of grace, and... I started reading the Word of God, and it was amazing because my whole life I lived in the darkness. You know, I, I would save face in front of my parents and my friends and stuff, but I would, I would, my life was in the dark. And once I started learning about the light, I was like completely consumed. But that's all I learned was the Word. I never got to know God, you know, because it was all about selling what I knew to you, you know. It's, it's still the same show I was trying to carry on. So when I fell and I was in the hospital, I told myself I, I wasn't going to cons be consumed with that exterior anymore. I was going to come to know God and come to know him. And I just want people to know how freeing it really is when things aren't going your way or somebody says something negative to just know, like, God's my father and he accepts me and loves me regardless of where I'm at and what I messed up or whatever I've done. The things that he's forgiven me for and comes to me anyway this is all small potatoes, you know what I mean? And uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Miss Lori. I know you went through a hard time. And um, it's been amazing going from the old program, you know, watching Pastor Pass, and then um, just watching all the things unfold and seeing how y'all stood still. You know, there was a lot of times we in the program would look at y'all, and y there were scared people here when nobody really knew what was going to happen. But we all had faith in God, and it was amazing seeing the administration praying for a proper vision and wanting to do this the right way. And standing here today watching all of that happen, I'm happy to call Heartland my home, and I'm very optimistic about where it's going. Uh, I'd like to thank the Men's Center. I know everything that they're doing over there is what my heart cry was today, to get people to know what we all know. And uh, that's the love of God. You know, I'd like to thank Kayla Barton and Josh Barton for welcoming me into their families. You know, that means a lot being as far away from my family as I am. But um, at Drew, Cameron, you know, Connor, all my, my brothers out there, just know wherever you're at in your walk with God, I'll be there with you, you know. And uh, I don't want to minimize what's happening right here. Uh, me and Jacob have been best friends since we were 11. And I, I think even me saying best friends doesn't let y'all truly understand the depths of how close we are and uh it's amazing in, in ecclesiastes it says um to to that labor is no i don't even know how it begins uh to, well no that's three anyway uh <laughs> to to that labor of a good reward for if they fall one companion will lift the other but, but woe to the one that falls when he is alone for we have no one to lift him up and I, I really feel bad for Satan because every time he tries, I know I got a brother that would be there to lift me up. A three-strand cord is not easily broken. And I know with me and him, we're just going to continue to go closer to God. And I just want to thank everybody.
Yeah, guys, tonight is definitely a celebration and a great representation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, about what he did on that cross for all of us, wicked people, so that we could come, you know, and live with God and become righteous in his sight. And, you know, it's not anything special that me and Stephen have done to get to this point. We were both, like, you know, best friends since we were 11 years old. And to say it the kindest way possible, we were heathens. I mean, we did everything rebellious. We were definitely, we've been brothers since we met. And we were definitely brothers under the devil in those times. And I don't know why, but for some reason two years ago, God called out to us, brought us to the home of grace, saved our souls, redeemed us, and has brought us here to this point and brought us through to this journey. And it definitely has not been an easy journey over the last two years, like uh, Scott was talking about. When I got here, Went down to the 60 stall, was milking cows, and I hated it. I mean, I hated it. That was, that's an understatement. And so I went to Scott's office, never met him, and I said, hey, I don't want to be here. And he's like, oh, you're here. you want to use my phone? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then we became great friends. But, you know, it's definitely been a journey and um, definitely had to endure and persevere. But, you know, Heartland is an amazing place, guys. It has been an awesome journey. We've got to do some awesome things. We got to you know, work with cows, farm, do all kinds of stuff that we were never able to do. And also to live in a community of people all serving and worshiping God is amazing. I mean, this place truly is amazing. Thank you, Ms. Lloyd, for following through. Yeah. There's four guys I wanna really recognize tonight. It's Scott Miller, Tom Dombrowski, Nathan Mays, and uh, Shane Settlemeyer. These four men pour into me on a daily basis. They speak life to me. They help me in all areas of life, relationships, my work life, my academics lives. Probably more often than not, they say, hey, you see what you're doing right there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't do that anymore. All right, all right, I understand, you know. No, but seriously, I love these guys. They are great friends of mine, and uh, I love everybody here. This is an amazing place. Um, guys in the men's center and women home, just take this time out of life right now, this little bit of break that you have, to focus 100% on God. Seek to hear God in every situation in life right now, because I promise you, 18 months goes by pretty quick, guys. And life's right there waiting, so don't rush anything. Seek to hear God. I love you guys. If we could get the Men's Center staff to come up, and I'll pray for these guys. Father God, I humbly come before you as your servant today, Father, and I just ask you to please fill these men with your spirit tonight, Father, and as they go into what's next in their life, Father, help them remember where they came from and where they're going in this new season of life, Father. I thank you, Father, for the restoration that you've done in their life, Father, that you're doing with their families, Father. I just pray, Father, that, that they give you glory on a daily basis, Father. And that they praise your name on a daily basis, Father. Yes. It's in your holy name, Father, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we thank you and ask you for these things, Father. Amen. 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 Amen.
do we realize what an honor and privilege that it is for us to on a consistent basis see a miracle like that? Do you realize that's a miracle right there? You heard Stephen say that he just couldn't stop. He tried so hard in his own strength. And here God has taken him and restored him and has got great plans. And then to see that great herd of people, I'm sorry, giving me a microphone after something like that is just not a good idea. <laughs> to see that herd of shepherds come around them to be available and to lift them up in prayer and say, you can do this. And that's excess. We're part of that. Can you believe that? Yeah. I don't know how, but God is good. Well, welcome to Heartland Community Church, a place of restoration. Amen. By God's grace. Well, my name is Judy Barton. Are we, do we have any first time visitors here with us tonight that this is your first time being in our church family? We're family tonight. All right. Well, if you are live streaming with us on Facebook and you're watching this tonight, we welcome you. We're very grateful that you have chosen to be a part of this service and to seek God's face with us tonight. If you would make a comment, uh, someone would like to respond to you. We, we want to know that you're there. If you have a prayer request or a need, we are available and we'd be very much be blessed to hear from you and know that tonight. Well, church, we have a few announcements. We are an active body in a great community with lots of things going on. And if you are a man of God and you want to be a part of that herd and to be able to be a part of encouraging one another and lifting each other up, the Sons of Promise will be meeting this Tuesday night. It's a great time for men to get together and spend some time together talking about the things of God, worshiping and just encouraging each other in the Lord. That's at seven o'clock on Tuesday night at the Legacy Building. Uh, youth group this week will be at 645 on Wednesday night. It is small groups. If you don't know where your young person is supposed to go, you can contact one of our youth directors or someone in the office, and they would be glad to tell you where to drop your child. Young person. They're not children anymore, are they? Are uh, teenagers off at? Special announcement. We talked about it a little bit this morning. It's a marriage renewal. Uh, yearly, we get together as men and women of God, married couples, and um, our pastors and leadership come together and share um, and envision us as to what God's plan for and, and structure of marriage should be. And we have that coming up next month. Very excited about it. It will take place. Dinner will start at the lodge. You will get to have dinner together as a large group of people that is complimentary, so don't let the cost deter you. There will be child care also if you have a child under, the se uh, under seven years of age, child care will be provided. Just contact Miss Debbie Cowens and let her know that you're coming. And if you have a child that's going to need um, a caregiver, just let her know about that also. Uh, one more thing tonight will be the last night you can sign up for Bible College. Um, it excites me the way we were worshiping this evening and what we got to witness tonight. We have another leg of our ministry getting ready to start. And to me, in my mind, when we were worshiping, it's one of those places where we are girding up and training uh, offering training for you to be able to go out there and know more about the word, to live victoriously, because there is victory in Jesus. He is the answer. And so if you are still been kind of toying with the idea of en enrolling in a Bible college class, Life of Christ and Relational Theology are still open. Uh, I am a, will be here tonight to be able to sign you up if you would be interested in getting started in that. Classes begin tomorrow night. For those of you who've already signed up, we've got about 16 people signed up for classes. That starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow night at the Legacy Building. All right, ushers, if you'd come forward, we'll receive our tithes and offerings tonight. Amen. Thank you, Ty uh, Ushers. We are grateful for your service. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we love you. And you have shown yourself magnificently, Lord. And God, um, you have been glorified tonight in the lives of people who have chosen you as the answer in their, in their time of need and have glorified you. God, may you continue to be glorified as we give our tithes and offerings tonight, as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth with clean hands. God, we ask, Father, that tonight, Lord God, you would continue to be here. Lord, that we would commune with you, that we would um, be able just to continue to just soak in your presence. God, because you are good and you are the answer to every need. There's so many needs here tonight. So many broken hearts, so many reasons to, to rejoice. There are people mourning, Lord God. If there is anything tonight, Lord God, that is for sure, it's that you 
have an answer and that you want to minister to us tonight. You want to commune with us. So God, we give of, of our tithes and our offerings tonight, Lord God. I know I say that a lot, but God, we are just so blessed and so grateful, Lord God, to be able to take a minute, Lord God, to extend ourselves to you. Lord, we ask, Father, you'd be with our team in India. And God, I pray, Father, Lord God, that you would be exalted in our worship. In Jesus' name, amen.
church it's amazing worship is a time where we're to give God praise lavish on him what he's worthy and it never ceases to amaze me you know you could look up here and see God moving on people God healing people God touching people God breaking change you could see God moving and, and listen to me this is how good of a God we serve we come to give him something he says I got something better to give to you. I'm reminded of, of David saying, God, I want to I want to build you a temple. I want to do something that's going to tell everybody about you. And God says, no, you're not my guy for that. But let me tell you something, David. I've got something for you. You see, what God has for us blows everything that we can ever imagine out of the water. And we have set this time aside to get back to our foundation. And God's teed it up. God is not done yet tonight. If you will, before we move on, close your eyes. And I know God is still wanting to speak to some. And Father, tonight, Lord, even right now, we're asking for your spirit to move. Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you would come even more in this place. Lord, we ask for you to move in a way, God, that only you can understand. But Lord, we open ourselves up. God, we lay our lives down and we truly say, have your way in us. God, you know what I've planned to speak about, but Lord, that doesn't matter compared to what you're going to do and father we ask for you to have your way god come and move in the the hearts and the lives and the minds of your people right now come and bring healing come break bondage god come and set people free come and reestablish vision god bring joy to the face, to the life, to the heart of your people. God, speak. Spirit of God, move. Lord, like we sung, breathe on us. Come tonight, God, and have your way. Lord, we are willing to tarry. God, we want to wait on you. We don't want to take a step forward without you leading us. God, come and be our guide. Come and be our shepherd. Father, come and be our dad. Come and love us. And Lord, teach us how to love you. God, as we learn to love each other. Lord, you have your way this evening, Lord. We commit to you this service. For it is in Jesus' wonderful name that we pray. And God's church said, 
Amen. You can be seated. How are we doing tonight? Well, tonight I want to speak to you about why we are here. As you saw, a good illustration of that already was seeing Stephen and Jake graduate tonight. But how many of you guys understand and know Heartland's a whole lot bigger than that? About half of us. Well, that's okay. I pray by night's end, more than half will know. But the truth of the matter is this. What God has called us to do here is big. And it's unique. You know, I'm going to show a picture here in a little bit of several of the different entities that we have that, that Heartland, if you could call it that, encompasses. I will say this, that I know of no place, not just in America, but in the earth, that has something that is similar to what we have going on here. And that's not a, a pat on the back. That's not, ooh, wow. What that is is this. That's a, oh, my. That means God has given us a great deal, but he said, I'm leaving it in your hands. I want you to shepherd this, to oversee this, to take care of this. But understand, everything that we see that encompasses heartland, apart from us, is going to burn up. It's going to disappear. These buildings that we sit in, the places that we go to work at, they are not eternal. They'll one day be gone, and yet God has given them to us to steward, to shepherd. But you see, the buildings, the jobs, the, the things that we do from day to day, those aren't the main reason that we're here. And before I, I begin, I, I want you to think about something. Go with me right now in your mind to the very first day you came here. Can you think about that for a moment? For some of you guys, it may have been, that was last week. <laughs> That's okay. For some, you maybe have to get some cobwebs knocked off and say, I don't remember. Let me think about that. Go ahead. Think about it for a second. I, I don't intend to preach. Now, we'll get there. There'll be a little preach in here. But I more want to dialogue with you and show you and discuss. You know, God, pastor came to us and said, I, I want to start 101. Let's just re-envision the Let's go back to the basics. Why are we here? Who are we? Let's talk about what we believe. Let's talk about where we're going. And God has blessed that. And God is in the midst of what we're doing. And what that means is this. You have a role, a place here. Now, go with me again. You there? The first day you was here? I can remember my first day on the farm. I, I showed up at 5 o'clock. Actually, it was the middle of the night is when I got here. I'll tell you a story. I, I showed up at the men's center. They had one on-duty staff. He was a mountain of a man, Mike Peterson. He checked my bags in. My mom had rushed to get all of my stuff. I came directly from jail to here, so I didn't even pack my own bags. I got in a car, and they took me up here, dropped me off. Well, lo and behold, I had some stuff still hidden in places. <laughs> so Mike's going through my stuff. And he begins to pull, what's, you thought you was going to slide this in past me? I'm like, man, listen, it's 11 o'clock and you and me are the only two up right now. I'm not trying to make you mad at all. <laughs> I didn't know that was in there. He's like, Rod, I've never heard that before. I'm like, he isn't going to believe that. Of course not. So he, he searches my stuff, leads me to my room. I get to my room and I'll never forget this. I had a, a little black bag I'd have forgotten about. And I took everything out of the bag or so I thought laid it on my bed. And out came what looked like a highlighter with a false rear end. And as the highlighter rolled out of my bag, I thought, oh, no. What that was on the inside of that was a one-hitter. I used to do drugs out of that. I'm thinking, what do I do now? Do I go back to that mountain of a man and say, here, or do I just try and get rid of it? And I realized what was right was this, to walk in the light. And I went back to him and I said, Mr. Peterson, I, I need to give this to you. And to my astonishment, all of those, yeah, right, I don't believe that, went away in an instant. And he realized, you know what, there may be something to this young man. And God was able to undo what I'd walked in, the mess that I'd made. 
And you see, that was one leg of what we're called to be, who we're called to be, what we're called to do. But Heartland in its entirety is bigger than just one trip. You know, I've heard about that, about the Smithsonian. If you go, it's been a couple days there. It's the same here. God has made this thing massive and large. But understand, why we are here is not about just the jobs that we do. If you'll remember, one of the things Pastor Charlie was famous for saying is this. It's not about the milk or the cheese or the hamburgers. It's about souls. He didn't shy from that. He wasn't afraid of saying a, a for-profit business is at its heart about changing lives, redeeming the lost. You know, we, we heard from Pastor this morning how long ago it was that God set us on a map built us up and in 20 years there's been a lot done but you see what is amazing about that is there's been a lot of change in that time period and when I say that you probably think of the buildings around the people that come and go but I want to go deeper than that in those 20 plus years that we've been around there's been a great deal of change on the inside of people Listen to me. People came here. What we are on its face is a modern-day mission field. You could take Heartland and, and plant us anywhere in the world, and it would look like a modern-day mission field. We have people that come and go, come and go. And it's interesting, you know, when you go back to your first day here, who all was here? Can you remember that? I remember meeting Dan Rainville in a field. We're laying out some hoes, Dan. You remember that? You know, some of you guys have been here so long, most people you knew when you got here are gone. You anybody like that? Miss Laura, you know a few less people here than there were when you started? Right. Things change. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> For as many people as we have in that cemetery, there was a lot more that told me personally, I'm going to be buried here. Well, where'd you go? But you see, when we mine down to the core why we're here, it is about souls. But when we begin to talk about from Scripture, the Bible tells us a, a several things that we're to understand we're to be doing when God leaves us. And I want to start there on the top and then begin to work our way down even to the individual. Because listen to me, it would do us no good at all for me to just stand here and tell you, Heartland's going to do A, B, C, and D, go get it done. But you see, Heartland is nothing apart from you. We have no vision, no plan. There is no prosperity without you. You are what make up Heartland. No matter where you sit, no matter where you are in life, you are a part of what God is doing here. And it is so important to understand that God has a specific, let me say that again, that God has a specific call on Heartland Community Church. But before we get there, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28, just listen, I'm not going to take a bunch of time tonight. In Matthew 28, we're to go and make disciples. Jesus tells us in John chapter 13 that we are to be disciples that love. Peter tells us that we are to live at peace among our fellow brothers. Paul tells us all over the place to live in such a way that we bring honor to God, that we live in self-control. The Bible has mandate after mandate after mandate of what we are to be doing and who we are to be. There's a long list of things that as believers, God left us here to accomplish A, B, C, and D. And listen to me, every one of them are so incredibly important. And each one should be seen in a local body. But when you begin to take the lid off of that, if I could get, you, get your mind to think about a jar with all these different verses written all around it that make up the call of a local church. We are to be so in love with one another that the people around about us say, there's something different about that. 
We are to be so focused from a, a generational perspective that the old take part in the lives of the younger. Hey, don't make the mistake that I made. Hey, let me give you some wisdom. You see, there is to be this, this model, this picture that the Bible says, if you are my church, you'll do A, B, and C. We are to be hard laborers. We are to lay our lives down and take care of our families. The Bible says the man that doesn't eat is worse, or work, does, the man doesn't work is worse than a heathen. In a lot of facets, we have that taken care of. Work's never really been something we've shied away from as a community. But is that all that we are? If you can, can you bring up the mission statement? And if it takes a minute, I'm going to read it to you, okay? <laughs> There's our mission, church, right there. Mission statement as a church is this. Our mission is to evangelize, encourage, educate, equip, and then activate mature disciples who've been called by God, redeemed by Jesus, and transformed by the Holy Spirit through a sustainable, Christ-centered, intentional community built around the local church. I want to break that down just a little bit tonight and then blow it up and then go back down just a little more individually. Our mission is to evangelize. What does that mean? What's it mean to go and evangelize, Caleb? There you go. We're supposed to preach the gospel. And what does that look like practically? Is that just me standing up here telling you about Jesus? No. There's a whole lot more than just me standing up here talking about it. You see, we have a unique ability to live around each other in such a way you get to see the good and bad of my life. And I get to see the good and bad of your life. And you know what that means? We can be preachers 24-7. How about that? So when I'm standing in line at the, at the C-store, my card doesn't work. It's your machine. It's not my bank account. And I all of a sudden begin to act not so safe. And you're hooling, you reach over and say, brother, let me pray for you. Right? We have the ability as a community to show who Christ is with our lives. Every moment of every day. And that is a unique thing that God has given to us by design. Why is that important? Because the next thing we want to do isn't just preach the gospel. We don't just want to tell everybody about Jesus with our lips. We want to do it with our lives. But let me tell you where the faith meets the road. The next word is this. We are to encourage. Let me share with you something about that word. That word in the Greek, parakaleo. Para means to exhort comfort. Now, the root word of this pericalio is this legal advocate. The root word of pericalio, which means to encourage, the very root word means a legal advocate. Now, think about that for just a moment. I don't even know if, if we thought about this when we put this together. But here's the beauty of that. When we're talking about encouraging each other from a biblical standpoint that's not just me coming along and saying Stephen you alright no I'm, I'm not man you're doing great keep it up I'm for you man that's right and that's good but you know what the Bible is telling us here from this viewpoint it's when I'm standing in line and my cards not working and I'm getting mad you two people back don't go he is such a joke can you believe this guy preaches from the pulpit when he's preaching next, I'm not going to be there. Instead, it's this. No, I'm going to believe the best. No, I'm going, to, I'm going to see what God is doing on the inside of him. And listen to me now. Call it out. You see, it's not just about seeing it. It's about speaking to it. That's the biblical definition here. It's for me to be your advocate and you be my advocate. What does that mean? I fight for you. Where? in the court of public opinion. Listen to me. I pray I'm not going to go on trial anymore. I hope those days are done. But you know what? Every day, every single day, the devil wants to try us. He wants to beat us up. 
He wants to divide us. And you see, there is an attorney-client privilege that comes in law where we don't divulge the secrets to somebody outside the circle. And when the devil comes in and says, let me bring some division here, you say, no, 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 no. That's my brother. That's my family. That's more than a client-attorney relationship. That's my family you're talking about. And you see, when we begin to understand that our role is to preach the gospel, why? Listen to me now. Because it's not on us to save anybody. I always want to make that disclaimer. We're just supposed to tell the world about how good God is. We lead them to the Lord. We don't save them. And that's a beautiful thing because we get to do the good work. God does the dirty work. What does that mean? That means this. When somebody gets saved... I'm now their advocate. Hey, listen to me. Let me help you. Don't do that. You know, when I, when I first got in jail, I remember I was an idiot. This is how I wanted to go see the judge. I shaved my head into a mohawk. And my attorney wanted to t tell the judge that I was this good little boy that just got with the wrong crowd. He sees me and says, you are an idiot. <laughs> I'm canceling your court date. Go shave your head. And when it grows back, we'll see the judge. Why? Listen to me. He was for me. He wasn't trying to make me look like an idiot. And I wasn't going to go in front of him with a mohawk or looking like a skinhead. You know what I was supposed to be? Someone he's looking after. Somebody he's taking care of. And we have that same call on each one of us. Every one of us. It doesn't matter where you are in the pecking order. It doesn't matter where you are with a title or without. You are to be an advocate, a fighter for your family, for your friend. That's when it's good and when it's bad. That may mean sometimes you have conversations that aren't easy. But you know what? That's why we're here. To have someone that I love come alongside me and say, hey, you're missing it. Hey, let me help you with this because I see God working in you. Hey, I see God doing a work in you, but listen to me. This is taken away from it. Let me help you get rid of that. You see, we are to evangelize. We are to encourage. We're to love. Next is this, to educate and equip. I want to run those two together for this reason. Virtually everything that we do, and now everything that we do, you'll see what I mean in a moment, is about teaching. Not only are we supposed to preach the gospel, but when they get saved, we need to teach them, take them to school. What does that look like practically? Well, let me tell you, I'd enrolled in an 18-month recovery program. I had some children, and I want them to know about Jesus Christ. They're not going to St. Louis Public School. They're enrolling in Heartland Christian Academy. You know what that looks like practically? A friend of mine's got a problem with their family. Their son's running into some problems. Hey, you know what? We've got a boarding school that can help him. Teach him about the things of God. Oh, he's got a sister? Bring her on too. And you see, we don't just bring people here to stay and go to work. We want to teach them. We want to grow them in the things of God. Well, what if I've graduated the program and I moved on? Listen to me. we got Bible colleges for you. So you can let them roots run deep. So you can grow even more. Yeah, but if I've done all that, the church just started some classes. And they're maxed out, but they're coming back in a few months. Why? Because we want to educate and equip. We want to teach and train. Why is that so important? Let me give you a picture. You go back 200, 300 years, and then from there, you follow worship in the house of God. Shabaka made the statement this morning, and it was so dead on that we don't just take from the words of a song and make doctrine. We do the opposite. And when you go back to some of the old hymns that have been around for hundreds of years, what you'll find that's so incredible about them, they're full of doctrinal truths. And it's not just about having the Bible in a song, but you see, when that word is coming out of this mouth, it has the power to change and transform. And when my worship is based on truth, not about, oh, Lord, I feel like loving you, because there's days I don't. But rather, you poured your blood out when I didn't deserve it. Hold on a second. I can get with that. 
You see, that begins to be a foundation for me, not an emotional roller coaster I can embark on. I've been all that, and so have you. But you see, when we begin to take the people that God has brought here and teach them and equip them and encourage them and pour into them, you know what happens? Their base gets broader. That means they're not standing on a little stone in a river and one, one wrong move, they're going to fall off. But rather their foundation becomes broad and secure and you can begin to build up on it. And you see, God has brought us here to teach, to equip, to educate. We have a plethora of books of knowledge in that library, thousands upon thousands. Why? It's not for the birds. It's not for the dog. It's not for the animals that are left in the zoo. It's for us. And God has brought us here to know about him. And the reason for that is this. The more we see who he is, the more we change. The more he works inside of us. And then to activate mature disciples who've been called by God, redeemed by Jesus, and transformed by the Holy Spirit. Elisa, can you throw up that Excel spreadsheet if it'll work? Pray, church, right now. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Now, here's the deal. Can you read that at all? All right, praise God. At least the front row can read it. I can work with that. What this is, and I want to I make this clear. This is a small picture of who we are. And what's so neat about that is the second part of our mission statement really encompasses the first. We're to evangelize. We're to, talk, to encourage. We're to teach and equip. But listen to me. None of that happens until the call of God goes out. Until we're purchased by the blood of a Savior and until we're transformed by the Holy Spirit. But listen to me. He doesn't just do that so we can say kumbaya on a Sunday night. There's so much more we get to walk out. Now listen to me. It's God's greatest desire to just be like Enoch and bring us on up. Hey, you know what? I just want to, I'm going to call you home tonight. God wants to be with us. But listen to me. He left us here with a mission. And what this looks like practically, I want you to look at some of this blue over here. You see Heartland Community Church in the very center. What you have, those six boxes round about that, the men's center, women's center, the boarding home, the school, the Bible college. One of the things that's said often is we come here for one of two reasons, to get help or to give help. And that's right. And you'll see those six boxes around the church are great outlets for us to intake. Hey, how can I get to Heartland? we got a Bible college. Hey, how, how can I get to Heartland? We've got this or this or this or this. Come and be a part of our ministry. That may look like you coming in to get your life right. But listen to me when I say this, and please listen to me. Right progression between those two groups, right progression between the, the group that says, I came here to get help, and the group that says, I came here to give help, means this. As they progress and as they grow, they're going to cross both lines. They're going to cross both lines. You know what that means? There may be some that God called you here to minister to the broken. But you know what? There's still brokenness in you. And God, because he's gracious, is going to have you rub up against somebody that can help you. And that can speak into your life and heal that brokenness. And you can grow as you're pouring into others. And the same is true then about the one that comes to get help. Why are we here? We want the lost to be found. But you see, when they get found, they better go back out and bring the other lost in. And what does that mean? That means this. They walk a path where they begin to become solid in their faith. And they can then heal the broken behind them. How does that work practically? You'll see the green, I don't know what shape that is around that. A diamond. Thank you. I should have known that. You'll see the diamonds all around the Heartland community. Each one of those tools are an outlet. Why are we here? You know what we are? We're a place to feed 
local people. We got a lodge. They can stay there. They can hunt if they want. Oh, yeah, we got a, a large farming operation just a few miles away. Yeah, we do that. And it's on a huge scale. What's that? Yeah, we build our own houses, too. And they're fantastic. You need something printed up? We got scribbles and scribes. It'll take care of you. And you see, all of these things, all these, these diamonds around the blue, I didn't do this by mistake. They're all touching it. None of them are independent. And listen to me. We can write it on paper all we need, but the truth is this. If you're with us, you're with us. And what that means is this. Every portion of the green and the blue should be touching that church. You see, what's interesting about these mission statements, several places in the ministry have done it, and yet I've only seen on paper one vision statement. That's for the men's center. That's for the school. That's for the church. That's for Sharp Holdings. Everyone's mission statement has come underneath one vision statement. Why? Why is that important? Because here is why we're here. We're here for a church. And that vision is cast by that church and carried out by all of these entities that touch that church. And those entities aren't just businesses. They're people. And those people have a role within that company, within that ministry, within that church to do what? To evangelize to encourage, to equip, to teach, to train. Why? Because what we want to do is raise up mature believers. Can I get my volunteers to come on up here for a moment? At least you can put the mission statement back up. Thank you very much. I put some stickers on the floor just to make sure we got it. And Mauricio brought to my attention. I left out Calvary Medical Center. Mauricio, you can come on down here, right over there on the other side of the steps. Thank you very much. I apologize about that. You guys are a part of us. Know that. I wanted to give you guys an illustration tonight. As you can see, we're in some somewhat chronological order. But you see, age is not what's important right here and right now. The progression of what we are as a church should look like generation and generation and generation. It should impact lives and continue to do so. Meaning, when I become a disciple, I want to turn around at some point and make disciples. And what we need to see then is in this local body, what we are, why we're here is to see from all walks of life, children that come to be a part of our ministry. Think about this. We got a little man here. He was born and is being raised here. He's not ever known anything else but Heartland. Praise God for that. What's our goal? What's our purpose? Why are we here for him? We want him to know Jesus. And what do we want to do? We want to encourage him. Bring forth the gifts of God that are on the inside of him. We want to see him become a disciple. And then as he grows, make disciples. And listen to me now. We got a young lady. Her parents are in a different place than where Mauricio is. But you know what you see? The same exact model applies. What do we want? We want her to come to know Jesus Christ. We want to disciple her, train her. We want to see her pour back in. Why? Because she's got some people need. There's truth on the inside of her. Listen to me. There's a personality on the inside of her. It's like a magnet. You know that. <laughs> she knows it too. <laughs> and God's going to use it. And you see, now listen to me now. We've been doing this for a while, so there ought to be some fruit. We got a young lady that came here. How old were you when you got She's 13, okay. So she came here when she was eight. Stephanie has walked through the program, graduated the school, went through Bible college. Now she's a mom. 
She's serving God. You were wife first. <laughs> no immaculate conception here, huh? <laughs> Praise God. But you know what? It, it's right progression. And in a way that we want, you're right. You were a wife first. Thank God for that. But listen to me. God's doing something here. What do we have here? Man, by the name of Eric. He come here broken. What do we want for Eric? We are here for what reason? To see him get to know who Jesus Christ is. And then watch God transform his life. Listen to me. I can testify as to God is working in his life. What does this then look like? What we want is for the young men and women of God to grow in their faith, grow in their walk, to end up on this side of the stage. What does that mean? It doesn't just mean that you guys are older. <laughs> That's right. Praise God. <laughs> They're seasoned. You guys are seasoned. <laughs> But you know what? Listen to me. They're seasoned in the things of God. And they got something to give. That's why they're here. It's not just about getting. It's about giving. And what we find, again, from all walks of life, God brought them. It didn't matter where they came from. That's my, the point of this illustration. It doesn't matter where you come from. God has a purpose. We have a purpose for you here. We want you to know Jesus. We want you to grow in the things of God and pour into the lives of those around you. Why? Because all the glitz, all the glamour, all the things that we do don't amount to anything if we forget about you. Kathy, why'd you come here? Um, well, uh, my family moved here when I was 11, so it wasn't really a matter of choice. So, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and uh, so that's been 21 years ago now. And um, I just, we, I naturally fell into the progression like Tom is talking about. You know, I was raised here, um, finished high school, went to Bible college because that was the next thing that Heartland had to offer to me. So why not, you know? Um, it just made sense. And, um, and then I ended up getting married a year after bridal college. I mean, Bible college. And then... Uh, <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I was the person who was never getting married, by the way. But, um, you know, and really, you know, Josh and I, we're very much here to, to help people. And the jobs that we do don't particularly, aren't really directly touching any of the ministry. But, um, but we're here to help the people on this side of us with youth group and things that we do there. And we're very much watching the people ahead of us on this end of the, you know, it's these, these people are, um, let me think of a politically correct term. <laughs> All of the people that we look up to, our mothers and fathers are some of our favorite people on the planet. Um, I can't ever do this without crying. Um, we're so, so blessed with the leadership and the, the mothers and fathers we have in our house. You, c you can't find, uh, can't find any better. And so our desire, of course, um, is to help the younger generation, all the youth group kids, get to where they need to go in God, not just to be successful, but to do what God has for them, which sometimes you don't realize it, but that is God gives you when you walk in his plan, the most, you know, he gives you the things that you didn't even know you wanted. He ends up giving you the desires of your heart, the things you didn't even know you wanted. And sometimes we think we know ourselves so well. Ha! But uh, when you lay everything before God, everything changes and it always changes for the better every single time. And so, you know, now we have kids of our own and we want the same progression for them. Um, and so, I don't know. Volunteers, thank you guys very much. Can you guys put your hands together for our volunteers? Why are we here? Why are we here? That's right. Now listen to me because I, I want to just say a few more things.
Shabaka's going to tell us why he came and stayed. You are here because God called you. You are here because God selected you. You say, no, I just had crack cocaine as an addiction. Listen to me. God's ways are mysterious. He can use brokenness to pull you in. God has called you here, each one of you. And what that means then is this. You are a part of this progression. And you practically should be a part of this progression. This same thing should happen in your life. Maybe not just in age, but in your spiritual walk. You come to know the Lord as a baby in Christ, and then you grow, you're equipped, you train, you learn until you're seasoned in the faith. What does that mean then? It's my responsibility now to pour into those younger than me, those behind me. And listen to me, because I want you to know this. Every single person in this room, you have those around you that are watching you. All of us. We may think, well, I don't speak on the Sundays, or, or I'm not in a leadership role. Forget all that. You have influence. You speak into those around you. What are you doing with that? Not just with that influence, but personally. Are you growing? Are you changing? Do you see in your life this progression? And then you looking back and grabbing hold of them and pulling them to you, saying, let me help you. Shabaka, what's kept you here? Well, I came, I don't know, almost 16 years ago. And um, I really was just supposed to be here for three months, an internship of sorts working with young people in the boarding school. And um, at the end of that three-month time period, um, I had fallen in love. I don't know another word to use, but in love um, with people here. And at first, it was just really in love with the kids that I worked with. I, I loved every single one of those boys. Um, most of them are grown men now. Um, but I fell in love with them and, and felt God's call to stay here and to serve. And in the midst of staying and serving, um, I fell in love with the people that I worked with. And um, lifelong friends, they became. Um, I fell in love with the leaders that I had in the Bible college and in this church. And, and um, out of service and, and loving people and being connected to people, opportunity opened up for me to serve in the school as a teacher and then later as an administrator. And um, just around, I think it's around 2013 or 12, um, my wife and I were seriously considering what God wanted us to do. And we met with Pastor and Lori, and, and we were prayerfully um, trying to consider if we were to stay, if we were to move, if what was to happen. And, you know, we had a growing family, and, and, and um, the whole bridal college thing happened to us, too. And uh, we were trying to figure that out. And I think in the midst of that, um, God just helped me to realize that he had given me a family here. And so I'm here. The reason I've stayed is because of the lives of people that I'm connected to here. It's because this is my family. This has been my home. Um, I think I've lived almost, I will almost have lived here in Heartland in the middle of a cornfield longer than I actually lived in Chicago. Um, and so this is home. That's why I'm here. This is my home. This is my family. This is my church. And there's not another place on the planet right now that God has called me to be or where he's called me to serve or where he's called me to lay down my life and to see not only my own family and my own wife, my own children impacted, but my neighbor next door and the people that I come to work with and the people that I get to worship with and the people that I get to sit on the front row with. And so I've stayed because of people. Thank you very much. Yeah, put your hands together. <laughs> Pastor used to say it all the time. The greatest thing in the world are people. Why are we here? We're here for the people. Without each one of you, what do we have? What are we? 
And you see, this is why God has set us up to succeed. We're here to be a family, to be a team. Yes, we're going to change lives. Yes, those around us that don't know Christ, they will come to know him. But you see, the eternal part of what we have in this place are the relationships. That's never going to end. And that gives us an eternal perspective from God's viewpoint as to what he values most of all. Yeah, there's principles in his kingdom that we need to live by. But perhaps the greatest of these is this. On the image of every man, woman, and child, we bear Christ. We are literally image bearers of God. And God wants to reclaim that. He wants to buy that back. And he's not just set his mind to do it by himself. He says, I chose you. I plucked you out. I want you to partner with me in the middle of nowhere where I've built a community, where I've established businesses. Why? So you can impact beyond these four walls. You see, we're not just satisfied with transforming those in this church. God wants to do more, and he will. But the key, the key to our success is the person sitting next to you. That's what you've been called here for. And I thought it so interesting in the progression that Shabaka was talking about. He never set out to be the principal of the school. But he served, he honored, he loved, he built relationship, and God was able to raise him up. You see, when we are willing to submit to the process, God can do what he wants. And listen to me, God is doing it in this school. God is working all over this ministry because there are people that have said, God, it's not about me. It's about them. We are here to serve. We are here to lay our life down. And the more of us that partner with that, the more the world around us is going to see the work of God in this place. Tonight, before we close, I really feel it right that we just take some time. Stand with me to your feet. And let's worship together. There really was something earlier tonight with the Spirit of God moving. He's still here. And listen to me. He does his best work in the living room. And that's what we have here is a family that's together. Let's worship God and be dismissed.
can we do one thing? Let's let the, the instruments be. And let's just sing an a cappella as a family. And then we'll be dismissed. Chrissy, can you lead us in that? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Father, we thank you, God, for calling us into a body. The pastor said this morning, there are no lane, low Lone Ranger Christians. And God, thank you for that. Thank you that we don't have to go it alone. Lord, that we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother in you. But God, you've given us one to lock arms with to wrap emotions together, God, to share life with. And God, that's why we're here. You've called us to a people in a place. Now, God, come and have your way. Come and lead us, Lord. We've committed to following you. Lead us. And God, teach us. Teach us, equip us, train us, God, to be mature. Father, that we can be sent out across the world. Father, we're raised up in the company. Lord, you have your way. And God, let your church arise. Lord, I, I pray tonight you'd share with us your burden for the world. God, that we can know and understand the, the feeling that you have for the lost. God, the fight that you have for the wounded brother or sister. God, teach us to see with your eyes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.